Today's little project got a fairly ancient Logitech G500. Now the reason that I like this mouse and I want to try and basically it's got the dreaded left click so you left click and you can hear that tiny little Omron um, uh, 10M switch clicking away there but it's not consistent so you can click and drag and you might lose the click halfway through so if you're moving say a whole group of uh, emails from one folder to the next it might intermittently drop the, the, the click action out and dump them in the wrong folder. Uh, same as in Windows Explorer. It's a pain in the butt. So what I've done is I've bought a replacement uh, micro switch. So this is an Omron uh, 10M. You can apparently upgrade these to a 20M, but I'm just going to stick with, this is what is in the mouse at the moment. I'm going to put that into that. I can't find a video on YouTube on how to do it, so I'm going to do it myself. You can see that with all these tabs lifted up that clearly I've pulled this mouse apart several times in the past. Um, it was actually given to me by our IT guy at a previous business many, many years ago. And the reason that I like it is with these plus and minus buttons, you can actually adjust the DPI sensitivity. I don't worry about any of these programmable crap. Who cares about that? But all I want is a mouse where I don't have to load extra bloat software and I can adjust the DPI as I'm working. Uh, and, I, I, and I'm not a gamer, I'm, I'm old and boring, just ask my kids, but if you are doing something like Photoshop or Excel, you might want different DPI settings. And I've got two 24 inch monitors and one 17 inch monitor, so they all require different DPI settings. So that's why it's really, really good. And I can't, uh, to be able to adjust the DPI on the run. And once the screws are out, just use a screwdriver. There's a million tutorials on how to pull these apart. There we go. Let's get a blade in there. Now there is a ribbon cable up here that you can see. Don't tear that out. So what you need to do is Basically, if you need to, you can pull these tabs back and slip it out. The ribbon cable holder inside the the casement of the of the top of the mouse, so it just flips up and flips down. So flip it up and pull out the ribbon cable there. It'll make things so much easier. Here we go, in two pieces now. And this is the micro switch there. So that's the can read that 710M. That's the Omron that I'm going to the left uh, clicker that I'm going to replace. So you can hear it clicking, but believe me, it drops in and out. So you to take all these other screws out, which is the little this is the counterweight receptacle. There we go. Lift that out in one go. Now we can see what else is required to pull this apart. Okay. okay, two of these bad boys at the top here. So once all the main screws are off, so that little fella there, and to get under these one, to get to these ones, which are kind of shielded by this plastic uh, plate here, um, you've got to use a flat blade screwdriver lever off this. So you've got to pull this little bit of plastic out. You can see that it does want to come out. Come on. go put that down keep it safe and then this mechanism lifts out like so let's make sure yep there's nothing underneath and now I can get to these two screws in the top and all I want to do is access underneath that top PCB so that I can access that Omron switch You'll also notice these two springs here. So there's two little clicker springs. If they come out, you know where they go. Don't lose them. They're about a millimeter in diameter. And unless you're working in a clean room, which I am not, you'll never find them again. Yeah, don't lose anything. So you can see that they are tiny. So there are only two left. So we've got this fella and this fella. It's 
one. Two. So trying to get this apart, I know that this component and the bottom component are actually, uh, they're soldered together fully uh, on these on these pins. So this is not a press fit con uh, configuration. So there's one little screw in the bottom there that you've got to take out before you can even think about levering uh, this uh, PCB out of the plastic case. So I've seen a couple of tutorials on how to get this apart and apparently you've just got to wiggle it and lever it. Um, I've got a, a special bent screwdriver. It's kind of my favorite tool. You can feel that levering up. Wants to come, it wants to come, it wants to come. Come on, there you go. There you go, so it actually came out together, uh, it came apart I should say, fairly easily. But, I've got to try and get my soldering iron in there to solder apart this stuffed Omron uh, M10 micro switch and replace it with um, with the the um, with this little fella. It's all a bit of a mess here, but if you can see, these are my little clamp jaws with a little magnifying glass. Um, I bought these probably 20 years ago, and I've used them about 10 times. But when you need them, you absolutely need them, and they're ideal. So I'm just going to clamp the jaws uh, around this little part. So I can get the tip of the soldering iron in there and solder this, get this switch off. So the trick to getting micro switches off is to get a blade underneath the top of the Omron or the top of the switch and then put some upward pressure on it while you're, uh, while you're, while you're melting the solder underneath. There, go, there is a little flat spot on the top so I can gently put some pressure on. Melt pressure, melt pressure. Yep. Oh, it's coming off. Woohoo! And you can see at the top there is a gap there, so it's working. Tried and true method. One micro switch. Almost off. Not quite fully. So I've now got enough. Beautiful. Done. Then you switch. Just use tweezers to show where that goes. Obviously, the switch has to go that way, not that way. Duh. Yeah, it lines up beautifully. And I just should be able to, yep, yep, that's perfect, so that's flush with the board. So what I, all I need to do is put a little bit of solder on the back of the contacts down there, just to make sure that there's those joints are fully soldered up. So you can see that it um, doesn't look like a bad job in there, so they don't look, they look pretty well seated, and there are the three solder points there. Now I've got to reassemble this whole thing. Pop all of these, slide all these bits back together. There we go. Now the reason that I leave screws in the plastic components is so that I know which screws go where. Now when you're reassembling, make sure that this little plastic piece, which you can see has these tiny little ferrules uh, suitable for holding the springs, it goes back in, because I forgot this the first time around, and I thought where the hell did that come out? So you can just see where that goes, there we go, clips in like that, and then you can see that in there and there, they're the little recess ferrules for putting the um, those tiny little springs in. Yeah. This little metal plate arrangement goes in there. Now, those tiny, 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 tiny little springs can go in before the top, before this top mechanism goes in. So grab your tweezers. Grab one of the springs, don't compress it because if they bounce out, that is sayonara. You see how little they are. I reckon that's about six mil long and it's about a mil and a half in diameter. When you're assembling this, this little tongue there feeds in underneath this little lip. Gently, everything is gently. Then, 
this little plastic lever or shaft that we so carefully leave it out goes in pushes in across there you go goes the other way there you go. So you can see there's a tiny little gap in there, that's the correct orientation. So it's making all the sounds that it should. Sometimes you get lucky with screws, sometimes they pop out. This place that I'm working, which is my garage, is just the dumbest and worst place to do any kind of um, fine scale electronics because you're going to guarantee to lose something but so far so good so now we've got to put this back together so that just folds make sure you fold that little flap up like that that little fella goes in there yeah, I almost need a third pair of hands okay it looks like it's okay fold that back over all right, just put the screws back in and hope for the best. So why am I doing this? One, because I'm a bit of a tight ass, and two, because I'm a firm believer in the right to repair movement. I've just dropped that screw. I've just got to find it again. Okay, now I'll go and bench test. So I plug this bad boy back in. Here we go. Look at that G500. Nice, and it absolutely works a treat. I've got my little um. Adjustable DPI there, you can see they're going up, see they're going down. I really, really like this feature about the mouse. So now, if I flick over here, got Excel open, I'm on the higher setting, so whatever it is, 500 DPI, I'll just turn that down a bit. But you can see here, see, click and drag, and it works. Normally, what would normally happen is you would click and it would drop intermittently and your mouse would keep going because the clicker um, was busted the little Omron switch so absolutely 100% works perfectly easy to do if I didn't stuff around making a video I reckon it would have taken me maybe half an hour so got some modest skills in soldering got a pair of tweezers got a micro screwdriver um, it's pretty easy and I haven't actually bothered to re-glue these um, sliding pads on the base here so I also don't have any weights in this one, so I can just, you know, pull these corners up whenever I, if I ever need to again. You can see where I've damaged that to get to the uh, access screw in there. So look, this is absolutely worthwhile to repair. It's a super mouse. This mouse is probably 12 or 13 years old. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. As I said, I don't game, but I really, really like this mouse and it was definitely worth having a crack to save.